Well, Susan, we almost got it. Almost got it? Yep. Did you do it okay? I gave, I gave myself a 5 out of 10. Uh-oh. Is that okay? That's not almost getting it. No? <laughs> no. An 8 out of 10 is almost getting it. Let me see if I can. 5 is mediocre. Yeah, it was mediocre. For some reason, this program likes to just jump right on to the next commercial, even when you tell it to stop. It just ignores you. Well, computers do that. They it's like my kids. Ah, okay. So it, this computer is another one of your children. Yeah, you could say that. So how are you doing this morning? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Having fun. Excited, yeah. Why are you having fun? Well, I had, what do you call it, writer's block, TV block something I couldn't figure out what to do all week so I watched videos this morning and I said ah so I ran to the shop put these all together in time to bring them over here so you have a plan for us well I have a plan I'm going to show you how to do these okay you want to see what we're going to do let's do over here in the close-up and see, and see what you're going to do yeah uh, let me switch over to that camera angle give me one second and uh, why don't you go over and tell us, go ahead and tell us what you got. That is what they call, well, this particular designer, Eleanor Burns, is very famous. You've had her um, featured here before. Yeah. This is a tossed nine patch. But the traditional name, oops, you got a little thing right in front of the thing. There we go. Um, the traditional name is disappearing nine patch. So it uses a nine patch, but it looks very complicated. Doesn't that look really complicated to mm -hmm. you? And it's beginner, beginner friendly. It actually says up here in the corner on her pattern, easy. You could easy do it for e her. easy for anybody. You'll see at the end. You could do these. Okay, I'll trust you. You could do these. You can sew a straight line. You could do this. <laughs> I, I don't know yet if you can run an iron, <laughs> but. But this is, okay, well, here we are here still. That's the block we're going to make. And we just throw a bunch of fabric together so you don't have to have anything in particular. If you want particular color schemes, you can. But these are scrap friendly. And what it means by scrap friendly is you can use whatever scraps you have left, and it's scrap friendly. It's a good opportunity to get rid of all your extras, right? Right. Here's scraps, and they say they're all, all different. Now mm -hmm. this started out like, well, it started out with a bunch of squares first, but it started out like this. Now that is a traditional nine patch. Mm -hmm. And as you see, there's nine patches. This is a block, and the, pat the individual pieces are called patches. Okay. That's so nine patch. And that's a traditional block. You could use that and, and put it in basis of a whole bunch of different ones. This pattern uses five inch patches. You could do this from the teeniest patch, you know, a little teeny all, all the way up. If you did it big, like 10 inch, 10 inch patches, it would be, it would not be as pretty, but you know, you could still do it because you're gonna end up cutting these up a little bit anyway. Um, but I'm putting this back here because we have step by step. And what we do first is we have all nine of our patches and we sew them together. We got a row here and that's got the colored ones. And this is another row of three patches and it's a colored ones. And this is one that has the light one in the middle. I used white, but depending on what you had, you, you need to use one because that one ends up, remember here on here, you got the little teeny patches, the little white ones. I'm gonna go back here to this mm -hmm. real okay. quick. See the little white ones? So you have to have the real light one for contrast. So you have part of your design and part of your pattern there, seen there. So that, that one there is showing the little light ones. Now I'm going to show you the wonderful thing about her pattern is she gives you options. This pattern, she could just make it for one size, but this has, um, and it shows you how much of each thing you need. 
and it gives you a wall hanging size, a lap quilt size, a twin size queen and king. And it tells you all, so this is like your shopping list. When you go to the store, you go and you say, well, I'm making whatever size and then I need this. And you can, or you can go to your scrap bin and say, I need, um, if you were doing a twin, you would need 120 five inch blocks and then 15 five inch white blocks or light ones. So this is like your shopping list and how to and what you need and then of course it tells borders and borders are optional on some of these. This one here has two borders. So border number one is always the one furthest inside and then you have border number two which is the outside and how some people shop for their fabric if they're not wanting to do it real scrappy or they're just wanting to have something that they call a focus fabric. So you could go to the store and say, I want this focus fabric, and it tells you in here how, many, how much to get to do the borders here and have it scattered out in there. So you could get this focus fabric and then go home and add a bunch of your stuff you have at home or add something to it to, to match this. Um, let me find the other options here. This here is showing how to finish it up and it shows border number one, border number two, and then the inside like just all put together like that. The other option is with sashing. So she's showing here how to do, or lattice, they call it, some people call it lattice, some people call it sashing, um, and then this one has a cornerstone in it, and I, it's, yeah, it's a pretty good picture there, good. I'll give you an 8 out of a 10 on that one. Okay. Okay? Um, so you've got your sashing, which is the little light ones here, and you can do the sashing the same as the light blocks in here, or you can do something different. And then your cornerstones, and you could use a fabric that's in there or something completely different. And it's showing how to do that and just put it together or do it like this and put a border on. And that's a wide border. This one here, this page here, and this here is showing you how to do a border that has is made from five inch squares. Mm -hmm. So you can see each one of these little colors here is a five inch square and it carries some of these colors along out and this is just a single border and then, then this is showing and I know it's hard to see but it's showing a colorful binding so they have even pieced their binding on this one. And then on the back it also shows the little more condensed shopping list. So her, her patterns are really, really neat because she gives you variations and step, and they're all step by step. Mm -hmm. and we're going to go back over here and I'm going to show you step by step. We did, we did the rows, so we have the rows here. We have two with all colored, this and this. And you can just be as random as, as you want. As random as you want. Mm -hmm. And then you have the one with the white in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you need one then you that's go got a highlight color, right? Yes, you, you, need the, you need the contrast color. Right. Because, and it's got to be in the middle. So you have the contrast color, and it's light, and then these others. You go to the iron, and you press this particular one. Most of the time when you're quilting, you'll press away from, away from the light one, mm -hmm. always towards the dark, but not always. The particular one, the way, the way the, the blocks fit together is this, and it tells you in the pattern, press the middle, this is your middle row, press towards the center block, and then these two are pressed away. So they're pressed out. And I already pressed for you the magic of TV, da da, it's done, we're mm -hmm. pressed. And you have now... Is that so that the folds don't interfere with each other? Right. If you had them all pressed the same way, let's show this one here. If you had it, and let's go to close up now. I'm going to show a couple things that I do need. This, if you had them both pressed the same direction, you'd have a hard time. They would slide. They'd be... This here would have six layers. This would only have two. Mm -hmm. But the neat thing about pressing two directions 
is you now have, let's see if I can get up here good so you can see, I've got a shadow here. Okay, you've got this one pressed this way, this one pressed this way, and if you feel, you've got little humps, so you've got a hump on here that's kind of this, this direction, and a hump on this one that's this direction, and you'll put your humps together, and you can feel them kind of nudge in together, and, and they kind of, not necessarily lock, but I call it a lock, and then you will pin to, to hold your hump in, and you want to pin this one in, you're not going to run over your pins. Remember when you sew, you're not going to run over your pins. You're going to sew up to the pins and then take the pins out as you get to them. So you have those pinned together. And so that, that will make your joint where they join really neat and I'll show uniform. you this one here, really close. And it's that's humped. Um, this one is a little off, but not not too bad. I don't have one really, uh, uh, you know, extremely off to show you what it looks like. But you want to try to get your points and your your seams together so that they look like this mm -hmm. when they're together. So that's the tr that's one of the tricks of the trade is. Ironing them two different directions and using that little hump to kind of push them together and make them so that they join up good and it's prettier, prettier block. Okay, you will do that there and that there. Sew them together and you'll end up with ta -da, one of these. So that's your nine patch. And it tells you in there which direction you've got, you know, the two seams that you just made. And it tells you in there, press them out. Um, it makes it lay better in the, the rest of the, the block. But there, they press them out. And you have a, a nice nine patch. So you repress it after you get it sewed together? Okay, the, this is the seam you just did. You didn't press this seam yet. You just sewed this. Okay. So it's going to go wherever it wants to go. Right. But in the book, it tells you press it out okay. and press this one out. Mm -hmm. This one's all still pressed in, and these are still pressed out here. But yeah, every seam you do, uh, when you, a very, a very good thing to make sure your quilts look better, you can tell, you can tell if somebody's pressed in between and, and they haven't pressed it. Show the back of that on your close up okay. camera there. Okay, this one was pressed in. These were pressed out. We sewed this seam, da 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 da, da and then we're going to press it outward. Mm -hmm. This one I just grabbed up and didn't press, but I pressed these other two that we've cut. So you can tell if somebody presses in between on their blocks when they put their, their patches together, because if they don't, some of them have it one way, the other way, and they're open, and you if you lay them and press them, that, that's probably 25% of your um, block coming out pretty. Okay. So you want to press. You do. You, and some people have little teeny irons right by their sewing machine. Oh, we went back to the other one. Okay, and I don't know, I wish I could hold this up, but we'll, I'll show you after I, we're pretending. We put this down here, da da mm -hmm. da da. And this is called chopping up the block. And we pretend we're going to do rotary cut and we're going to go here, down the middle, you'll, ma you'll, you'll mm -hmm. measure here, and it'll be exactly down the middle this way, right. and exactly down the middle this way. So then you have those, and she shows you in her little book, and it's called Chopping Up the Nine Patches. And then she tells you here, you're going to end up with them twisted here. You can just go here and twist these like this. If you decide that you want to just use the same block together, or you can take all of these by however many you want, throw them in a box, and then just grab them out and put them together. It's random. Random. Yeah. So and she tells you both that way here. 
And then she shows you you're putting two together, so you're going to flip this one this way and this one this way. And you will sew. And there's no, there's no um, intersections to pin on this because there's none that overlap. So you're just going to sew down this one. And we'll just use these pins as a sew down real quick here. I thought about doing this on, on camera, but Fridays we have a little bit less time than Mondays. So we have so much going on at, at WTNB on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be tonight at, where are you going to be tonight at? Cherry's Jubilee and, and? the Tennessee Live concert. Yeah, so you're going to be up really late? Yes. So tomorrow morning you're sleeping in, or do you have kids stuff? I haven't even looked at the schedule yet. I'm going <laughs> to get through today first. <laughs> Your partner in crime is? He'll be back today. So there we sewed that one together like that. Mm -hmm. And this one together like this. And then you will press them so that one is one direction. So Basically we'll a repeat of the smaller process right. on a larger scale. Yeah, so you'll press that. one one way and one the other way. Mm -hmm. And the only intersection you'll have that you need to join is that one right there with this one right here. And when you get that all done and sewn together, you have your tossed nine pack, mm -hmm. and you have a bunch of, you get a bunch of them, however many you need for whatever size you're making, and then you sew them together either with your sashing lattice, whatever you want to call it, or sew them directly to each other. Let me show you how, um, that's not the one I want, this one. So if you sew da -da -da -da, this one to this one, so you this it one to this one, you just pretend it's the next one, mm -hmm. then it, that's how it would look when it's sewed together. That would be one of my, probably, I don't know, I keep saying this. I've had two or three patterns that I really like, but this one is probably one of my top because I like the randomness. Yes, I, some people love scrappy, and some mm -hmm. people, that's all they want to do is scrappy. And you call uh, it a tossed nine patch? Tossed nine patch. Is that because she tosses it in a box? She talks, tosses it in a box, and this lady really tosses a lot of stuff. Yeah. If you watch any of her videos, she sometimes will do stuff, and she doesn't need it, so she'll just throw it in the back. On camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's so funny. I always wonder who, who cleans up after <laughs> her. But okay. uh, it, it, it's fun. Uh -huh. And I, I, like, I love Scrappy because that's how originally that's what quit quilting was. It was scraps. Yeah, it was taking It was taking leftovers, you right. and you're just putting it all together. And they were originally utilitarian, but they became art. Mm -hmm. and, but I love Scrappy, and this one I like because you can just throw. I just threw a bunch of squares together this morning, but they all look like they go. You get the beginning of another quilt. And guess what kind? Uh, quilts of Valor. Right. Right. I said, well, we'll kill two birds with one stone. So this is the Eleanor Burns Toss Nine Patch. The traditional name is what? Do you remember? Do you remember? Uh, no, I was too hung up on the Toss Nine <laughs> Patch. Toss yeah. Nine Patch. Okay, disappearing. Disappearing. Because nine you patch. no longer see the Nine Patch in here, right? So it has disappeared. So that is good. Um, what I like about her patterns on back here, it says fabric selection, gives you some ideas. Um, there is also planned scrappy, so where there again where you have the, the focus fabric mm -hmm. in the border, mm -hmm. and then you have planned to have some of that in your scrappy, and you can actually, we, we had a girl a week or two ago that came in and used this pattern and bought the fabric and bought the little, the stuff to make the little pieces, so it was what they call planned scrappy. Okay. Okay. They're scrappy, planned scrappy, and then planned, planned. And, and this, this one is a hard one for people who are, are really OCD and want things exactly. Mm -hmm. if, if somebody's trying to say, I'm trying to get out of being OCD, then I'll say, well, you can do this. There's enough you when you start that you can get, but it will force you to do a little bit out of your box. And well, they can pick a very nice... Um feature fabric and we're, we're right. you kind of weave it throughout right. that way they've got the theme that they right. like to keep. And uh, 
you can get the remember we showed the the five inch squares that come in already done mm -hmm. you could get those and um it, fabric selection let me just read her fabric selection thing on here it says begin by selecting a package of five inch charm squares or five inch squares and then get as many packages as you need for your blocks and if you're doing the the blocks on the outside border get get enough for that and then you can either cut them from scraps, fat quarters. Um, you need to select what they call a small scale light or a, of a solid light. So the small scale light is those things that have little patterns like this. So if it was something light, light. and it was a little pattern, that's, that's a small scale because you end up with this little here. And if you had something big and you cut it up, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see the pattern if it was like flowers or something. Sure. And a, and a good size, so small scale. So she tells you that. Um, darker small scale for the lattice and the cornerstones or the border number one. And it and it just she's very good about telling you what you need to do. And then also I help a lot of people at Hider Hangout. You I come do. in and ask, and I'll help. Yep. So you could show somebody how to get tossed or disappear. <laughs> You guys and your titles. <laughs> yes, I can tell you how to be tossed or disappear nine patch, and I can help you with your color color help. And I'll say, well, what do you want? And some people don't even know what they want. They just, I'd say, go look around, get something mm -hmm. that you like, focus fabric, and then we can match everything to it. Awesome. And how to hang out? We've talked about it before. Let's mention it again. First Street Square, right downtown in Cleveland, Tennessee. Right. Um, if you're not familiar with Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, you go downtown, which is those there's signs all over town now pointing to historic downtown. And Susan is about two blocks uh, east of the courthouse. Correct. About three blocks, maybe. Three, blo three blocks east of the courthouse, yes. There's a yes. little square there called First Street Square. It's really not a square. It's more of a... Oblong. Polyagonal. <laughs> polyagonal, is that what you call it? Oh, I haven't, yeah. I haven't looked at it to see what it really is. But the landmark is the museum. There's also signs all over town pointing to the museum downtown. Right. And Susan is within eye shot of the museum. So if you go to the museum and you're standing in the front, just turn around and you'll see Susan's store. Yeah, as long as the trees don't get too entirely big. Nah. Anyway. Well, we have a couple things going on. Um, tonight, of course, we're, we're going to be at um, Cherry's Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited. I, I want my thing that I took. <laughs> I might have to bid on my own. Oh, yeah, that's good. And cool. I saw two or three things, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to end up spending some money. Yeah, but Andrew it goes Johnson's. for a good cause, very good cause, art and school. Yes. Um, the, other, the other thing we have is our panty raid. Yep, mentioned that. And we are extending it to May 15th. We figured, oh, May 15th is when the day before I leave for Quilt Market. So we said, well, we'll just extend it to that. Bring in an un unopened package, say that 15 times fast, right. of um, lingerie. Mm -hmm. And it goes for the homeless or the needy. And you will get a free gift from Hide or Hangout. If cool. you're not a quilter, you won't get fabric. We'll give you. Some, we got some other things for non-quilters. So, mm -hmm. everybody that hears this can come on in, bring us something that we can help, and you get a gift. Okay, and that's going on till till May fifteenth. All right, so a couple more weeks. Open hour, anytime. Where open is, hours. Uh, that's actually almost three and a half weeks. So that's where's good. Quilters Market at? St. Louis this year. Okay. In the spring, in the spring they go all over the place, and it's for um, retailers and wholesalers. Right. And I'm excited, and I was thinking about, since I'm going to miss one of my shows, possibly two that week, maybe doing a video and sending it in and let y'all put the video. We this could just send field reporters with you. And well, who, who's going to come with me? Jay, he's all over the place. <laughs> well, you know, if he shows up, we, that would be wonderful. That would H be really hence cool. the absence again today, right? So yeah, so he needs to work. So he can work that week and come to St. Louis. And Yep. Yeah. But in the in the fall, it's always in Houston. Okay. But spring is yeah. So we'll be we'll be there. We'll have a good time. All right. Well, yeah. Well, you're. I'm. We'll, we're going to do something from Quilt Market. I'll take some videos on my phone yeah, or something. Yeah. Do that. Do that. Maybe um, if but between now and then we can show you how to Facebook Live and we can bring you in. Oh boy, <laughs> I did learn something else. <laughs> oh no, something else technical and and. Ah. All right. That's well, all right. I still haven't figured out how to put my videos on Facebook. Okay, we'll cover that too. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks for coming in today, Susan. All right, well, I had a good time.
Yeah, we, we got too. visitors in the in the waiting over here. They're stacking up, so we better. Yeah, we I better, better get out of here. Let so me, that's uh, that. I got too much work to do today. All right. Well, you have a good day, and you we'll see you Monday. Stack of quilts to put binding on. Mm. I have eight quilts that I need to put binding on today. Okay. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Bye bye. Enjoyed for generations. Hyder Hangout, Quilt Fabric and More in downtown Cleveland is all things quilts and much more. Hyder Hangout stocks a vast selection of beautiful fabrics from upholstery to evening wear and will special order hard to find items. Find all the accessories to make any project fun and easy. Hyder Hangout offers expert instruction with classes for the beginner and the advanced. Ready to show your style? Get to Hyder Hangout, Quilt Fabric and More, 219 First Street Northeast, downtown Cleveland.